Vancouver, Canada. It's the Cube covering OpenStack Summit North America 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat, the OpenStack Foundation, and its ecosystem partners. Hi, and you're watching SiliconANGLE Media's coverage of theCUBE here at OpenStack Summit 2018 in beautiful Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host, John Troyer. We've been here, this is now the third day of coverage, John. Uh, we, we've done uh, a couple dozen interviews already. We've got one more day of coverage. Uh, but uh, we had some kind of perceptions coming in and uh, have some interesting differing viewpoints as to where we are for OpenStack the project, uh, the, the, where this show itself is going. Uh, so for, first of all, John, give me your impressions overall. You know, Vancouver, your first time here. Uh, you know, city I fell in love with last time I came here. And uh, let, let's get into the show itself too. Sure, sure. I mean, the, it shows a little bit smaller this year than it had been in yet past years. Some of that is because they pulled some of the technical stuff out last year, or the two couple years ago. By being a, a little bit smaller and being in a place like Vancouver, I get good energy off of, of, of the crowd. Uh, the folks we've talked to, the folks who've been going to sessions have said they've been very good. The people here are practitioners. They are running OpenStack, or about to run OpenStack, or upgrading their OpenStack, and, uh, or other adjacent technologies. They're real people doing real work. Uh, as we talk to folks and sponsors, the conversations have been productive. So I'd say in general, this kind of a small venue in a beautiful city allows for a really productive, community-oriented event. So that's been great. All right, so John, come on. In the analysis segment, we're not allowed to pull any punches. So attendance absolutely is yeah. down. So three years ago when we were here, it was around 5,500. No. Mark Collier on, a, on a, one of our opening segments said it's about 2,600. But to your point, I've not talked to a single vendor or attendee here that was like, oh boy, you know, nobody's here, it's not going on. Yes, the Expo Hall is way smaller, and people flowing through the Expo Hall isn't great all the time, but why is that? Because the people that are here, they're in sessions. They have uh, you know, 40 sessions about edge computing, hot topic, we, we've talked a bunch about that, interesting conversations. Uh, there is you know, way more in containers. Containers for more than three years have been, been a topic conversation, and there's so many other sessions. The so people are digging in. Uh, the line you've used a couple of times is uh, the people here are people that have mortgages. In a good way, it means these are jobs. These are not them, oh, I heard about this cool new thing, and I'm going to go check out beautiful Vancouver. Now, yes, uh, we've brought our spouses or significant others and uh, checking out the environment because, yeah, this place is awesome, um, but uh, there, there's good energy at the show, there's good technical conversation. Many of the people we've talked to, even if they are not the biggest OpenStack fans, they're like, but our customers are using this in, in a lot of different ways. So, Next, let's talk about OpenStack. Where is it, where isn't it? Uh, what, what, what's your take from what you've heard from the, the, the customers and, and, the, and the vendors? Sure, I, I definitely think the conversation is warranted. As we came in, uh, from outside the community, there was a lot of conversation, even back channel, like why are you going to OpenStack Summit? What's going on there? Is it still alive? Which is a, a kind of a perception of, maybe it's a, 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 an indication of where the marketing is on this project or where it is on the hype cycle. Um, but in terms of where it is and where it isn't, it's built into everything. So at this point, OpenStack, the infrastructure management, open infrastructure management solution seems to be, uh, seems to be mature. It seems to be inside you know, every telco, every cable company, every transportation company, every bank. So people who need private resources and have the smarts and power to do that have, have leveraged OpenStack now. And so that seems stable. What was interesting here is um, you know, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't speak to the health overall in the history of the, or the, the future of the project itself, the foundation, the summit. I think those are separate questions. You know, the infrastructure, the, the, the infrastructure and projects seem good. Also here, like we've talked about, the, this show is not just about OpenStack now. It's about containers. It's about, it's broadening the scope of these people formerly known as infrastructure operators to the application level as well. Yeah, uh, if you want to hear a little bit more, so some two great interviews we did yesterday. Sean Michael Kerner, who's a journalist, been here for almost every single one of the OpenStack uh, shows. He's at eWeek, had some really good discussion. He said, private cloud, it, it doesn't exist. Now, he said, what does he mean by that? There are companies that are building large scalable clouds with OpenStack, but it's the like of some of the big China telecom, the big China cloud companies. Uh, Oracle and IBM have uh, you know, lots of OpenStack in, in what they do, and yes, there are, as you mentioned, the telcos are a big use case. Um, we had uh, some Canonical uh, customers talking about 
edge as a new use case for a different type of scalability. Lots of nodes, but not you know, one massive infrastructure as a service uh, piece. But if I talk you know, kind of the typical enterprise or definitely going you know, the SME piece of the market, this is not something that they go and use. They will use services that have OpenStack. It might be part of the ecosystem that they're playing, but uh, people saying, oh, I had you know, my VMware environment and I want to go from virtualization to private cloud, OpenStack's not usually the first choice, even though Red Hat has some customers that kind of fit into some of the larger sides of that, and, and uh, we'll be talking to them more mm -hmm. about that today. And the other, Randy Bias is the other one to take a look. Randy was one of the you know, early, you know, very uh, you know, central to a lot of stuff happening in the foundation. Um, he's in the networking space now, and he says, uh, even though he's not a cheerleader for OpenStack, he's like, hey, why am I here? That's where my customers are. Mm, right, right. I mean, I do think um, it's interesting that public cloud is certainly mentioned, AWS, Google, et cetera, uh, but it, it's not top of mind for a lot of these folks, and it's mentioned in very different ways depending on kind of the players. Uh, I think it's very different from last week at Red Hat Summit. Red Hat, uh, with their story and OpenShift on top of OpenStack, definitely talked public cloud for, for folks. That, then they cross cloud, hybrid cloud. I think that was a, a much different conversation than I've been hearing this, this uh, you know, this week, and I think basically kind of maybe depends on the, the approach of the different uh, players in the markets, Do I know you've been talking to different folks about that. Yeah, absolutely. So like Margaret Dawson Red Hat helped us talk about how that hybrid cloud works because here, uh, I, I hate to say it's, you know, some, oh yeah, public cloud, that's too expensive, and you know, you're renting, and it's always going to be more. It's like, well, no, come on, let, let's understand. There's lots of applications that are there, and customers, it, it's an and message for almost all of them. How does that fit together? Um, I, I have some critiques as to how this goes together. Uh, you brought up another point though, John. Um, OpenStack Foundation is more than just OpenStack projects. So uh, Kata Containers, something that was announced last year, um, and uh, you know, we're talking about there, there's Edge, uh, there's the new CICD tool, Zool, um, which is now fully under the project. Yes, uh, you know, the joke of the week, there is no OpenStack, there is only Zool. Um, <laughs> but uh, there are actually, uh, there, there's another uh, open source project named Zool too, so boy, yeah, how many CICD tools are out there and you know, we've got you know, two different unrelated projects uh, with the same name. Um, John, you look at communities, you look at foundations, um, if this isn't the core knitting of OpenStack, what is their role vis-a-vis uh, -vis, you know, the cloud native and how do they compare to say, you know, the, 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 the big player in this space is the Linux Foundation which includes CNCF? Ah, that's a good one. I mean, in, in some sense, like, like all organic things, things are either growing or, or shrinking. They're growing or dying. Uh, on the other hand, in technology, nothing ever truly dies. So, uh, I think the project seems uh, you know, mature and healthy and it's being used. Uh, the foundation is uh, global in scope and continues to, 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 to run this, but I do wonder about community identity and what it means to be an OpenStack uh, Member, it's very community oriented, but like, what's what's at the nut of it here? If we're really, if we're if we're really part of a cloud native ecosystem, uh, CNCF and the, you know, it's part of Linux Foundation. Uh, there are all these different foundations, but CNCF, on the other hand, is kind of a grab bag of technology. So I'm not sure what it means to be a member of CNCF either. So I think uh, you know, both of these both of these foundations will continue to uh, go forward with slightly different identities. Uh, I think for the community as a whole, the industry as a whole, they be, they are talking and they'd better be talking and it's good that they're talking now and working better together. Yeah, great discussion we had with Lisa Marie Namphy, who's an OpenStack ambassador. She holds a meetup uh, in Silicon Valley, and when she positions it, it's about cloud native and it's about all these things, so like Kubernetes, front and center, uh, whereas some of the OpenStack people are saying, oh no, no, we need to talk more about OpenStack, and that's still, um, the dynamic here was, oh, we go great together. Well, sometimes thou dost protest too much. Um, <laughs> you know, Kubernetes, doesn't need OpenStack. OpenStack absolutely must be able to play in this, you know, container, cloud native, you know, Kubernetes world. Um, and there's lots of other places we can learn about Kubernetes. So it, it is an interesting dynamic um, that that have been sorting out. But um, it, it, it is not a zero-sum game. There's absolutely lots of things we have. I actually was really impressed how many customers we got to speak with on the air this time. Nice with three days of programming. We had a little bit of flexibility and uh, not just people that were on the keynote stage, uh, not just people that have been coming for years, um, but you know, a few of the interviews we had are relatively new. Uh, you know, not, not somebody that have been on uh, you know, since
since uh, you know very early in the alphabet. And now we're at Queens. Um, right. a, a, anything more from from the customers or you know that that container Kubernetes dynamic that you want to cover? Sure. Well, I mean, just that. Um, you know, containers at least, containers were everywhere here. And uh, so I think that kind of question has been resolved in some sense. It was a little more contentious last year than this year. Uh, I'm actually more bullish on OpenStack as a utility project uh, after this week than before. I, I think I can confidently look pe people in the eye and say that. Uh, the, the interesting thing for me though, and coming from Silicon Valley, is you're so used to thinking about uh, VCs and, and, and growth and, and new startups and where's the cutting edge, that um, it's kind of hard to talk about this, um, you know, maybe it, it, this open source business model where, um, you know, the customer base is, is finite uh, and, um, you know, <laughs> it's not growing at 100% a year. So, uh, I, you know, sometimes the press has a hard time covering that, analysts have a hard time covering that. And if you wanted to give advice to somebody, you know, to get into OpenStack, I'm not sure who should if they're not in it already. If, uh, you know, there's def definitely defined use cases, but I think maybe those people have already self-identified. Yeah. All right, so yeah, the last thing uh, I wanted to mention is, yeah, we, we you know, big thank uh, to, to you know, uh, our, our sponsors to help uh, get us here. Uh, the OpenStack Foundation, really supportive of us for years, six years of us covering it. Uh, our headline sponsor, Red Hat, uh, has some great customers, uh, talk about this piece, is it kind of, we, we talk about it, uh, you know, practically Red Hat month on theCUBE for, for, for John uh, with, with Red Hat Summit and OpenStack. Um, and uh, Canonical, Contron, Nuage Networks, all helping us to be able to bring this uh, content uh, to you. So be sure to check out thecube.net uh, for all the coverage uh, in the past, as well as where we'll be. Hit John Troyer, Jay Troyer on, on Twitter, or myself, Stu, on Twitter, if you ever have any questions. People we should be talking to, uh, you know, viewpoints, uh, whether you agree or disagree with what we're talking about. Uh, big thanks to all of our crew here, and uh, you know, thank you to the wonderful people of Vancouver for being so welcoming of this event uh, and, and of all, all of us. So, uh, you know, check out all the interviews and for John Troyer, I'm Stu Minnan. Thanks for watching theCUBE.